Dead Island 2 is filled with two things, locked doors and jump scares. Oh, I crap. guess there's also oh, zombies oh, as well, but no islands for some reason. What's up with that? Anyway, if you're jumping into this dead continent, then here's five major mistakes to avoid. Let's go. Let me know in the comments any tips and tricks that you have so we can all help each other out. Now let's start with fuses and locks. And I guess just like puzzles in general. The first thing really is fuses. Now you'll come across these fuses and they're also marked on the map as well, which will require you to have fuses to put into the fuse box to unlock these different areas. These areas contain all sorts of crafting materials as well as weapons and other sort of doodads in there. Now these fuses, you can find them in the world, but they primarily come from just purchasing them from vendors which you absolutely should do. They do cost 1500 cash, which is kind of expensive. But if you take into account the fact that if you find a weapon in there, chances are it's going to be worth more than 1500 and you could sell it if you wanted or sell your old weapon, you'll definitely make that cash back. So it is worth carrying as many fugitives as you can because you will find these areas all over the place. And it's super frustrating when you don't have any actual fuses to put into the fuse boxes to open these things because you'll have to come back to them later. And I guess on that same caveat with these sort of environmental things, you're going to come across tons of locked doors that require keys or keypads or all sorts of nonsense in order to open them. You don't actually always need the key or something to open them. Sometimes you can break some glass and get your own kind of way in there, or there might be a second entrance like around the back or up and around certain ways. So there is often additional ways to get into places, but it's also as a second point to not spend too long trying to figure that out as some areas are locked behind like main story progression or even side quest progression. So you might spend too long trying to figure out a way to get into places, but in some cases you can get into areas without having the key or the keypad or something like that. It is definitely possible, but don't spend too long trying to figure that out if you do get stuck, just like move on to something else. Using the environment to your advantage is a massive thing. So the world is littered with jerry cans and batteries and all sorts of things that you can pick up and throw at the hordes of zombies that will add elemental effects to them or manipulate the areas around them. Now, the basic interactions that you would have known is, you know, water, you can put electricity on it to shock enemies or oil with fire for a barbecue, but you can also start a fire with electricity on oil as well. You don't have to have like a fire weapon to do that. If you're trying to get to something that's blocked by acid, you can actually remove the acid with water or even the chem bomb, which will put out fires and remove the acid when you do hit it on the ground. It also creates a little water puddle that you can electrify as well. You can and should also set up your own acid, water and oil pools to deal with the tougher enemies and take a second or two to look around the environment before just like face tanking the zombies as there is often all sorts of ways that you can take out these zombies and you should be using these environmental things because the way the game is balanced it seems like you're supposed to be using these environmental effects to your advantage rather than just like swinging at enemies as you typically would do in a zombie milly sort of a game if you know what i mean we'll touch on that a little bit more in depth a little bit later in this video as well and now let's talk about skills so skills are a massive part of this game and there's no skill trees it's just the skill cards now the skill cards you will gain from completing quests and leveling up and also finding them occasionally in the world. Regularly check your skills for newer and stronger alternatives or even better synergies with your abilities or survivor and slayer cards as you will get heaps of these. And for me personally, I found that every time I opened my skill menu, I was like, huh, I got a new one, but I don't even remember getting this. And you'll just find them because sometimes you'll get a skill card for completing a quest or doing something while you're fighting zombies and you just like won't realize that you've got new ones. The key choice really that you'll make in these skills is between blocking and dodging. Now I'm personally a dodge guy I prefer dodging but there isn't really a right or wrong answer here you could block if you wanted to there's always things to tinker with here right because you can change your skills at any time I personally ended up tinkering a lot with my skills especially getting rid of dropkick for some reason right in like all these like zombie games I love dropkicking enemies like my favorite thing but in Dead Island 2 I actually found that the flying kick was better for me and because I had a survivor skill which also weakens enemies which adds the amount of physical damage that they take I found that that was more valuable to fly kick them add that weakened status then they take more damage and then I can finish them off with my weapon rather than just drop kicking them which just didn't seem as effective as it does in another zombie game about lights you know what I mean workbenching is 
is a must in Dead Island 2. So the workbench is a big part of the game, not only to repair your favorite weapons when they do break, which is a huge mechanic because you can always keep your favorite weapons if you've especially invested good mods and perks into them. You can just repair them once they do break. So make sure you do that. Basically at every workbench, like what I found is every time I get there, I just repair like my couple of like go-to weapons, even if they're not broken yet. Now you'll also get blueprints along like the main story and doing side content, which will allow you to unlock more perks and mods for these different weapons and you can always tinker with these and change them as you wish but i would also be checking your locker regularly for the unclaimed property section when you go to the locker you'll have the storage menu as well as the unclaimed property and this will contain all the weapons that have dropped that you didn't pick up so make sure you check this regularly now even if there's like crappy gray weapons in here you can either sell these for cash or scrap them for materials so they do still have a use and it's often better like if you see like a gray weapon or something drop just to like leave it there so that it goes into your unclaimed property so then when you're back at like a safe house or something where there's a vendor there and a workbench you can then pick that out of the unclaimed property and then scrap it or sell it so you're actually getting a use out of it rather than just like carrying it and then eventually like dropping it or something later but you can scrap things that are in your inventory too so you could pick it up and do it that way you can also level match your gear this does cost cash but it's not as worth doing as it seems like when you're just in the early stage of the game and like leveling up it's like oh yeah i want to like you know increase my favorite weapons damage for sure but if it's like a green or even you know a blue to some regard it's not super worth it because you're definitely going to find something that's better and you're going to be finding heaps of weapons so it's probably worth just saving that cash until you get like purples or blues or something or even the legendary gear that is like much more powerful that you actually want to use but if you've got like a favorite weapon that you just really want to keep and like level match it then obviously you can just spend the cash on that let's go through some massive combat things now i didn't know exactly how to like section this but we're just going to like give it a umbrella of like combat mistakes firstly the zompedia is actually huge now when you look at this you can see all the different types of zombies but you can also see how best to deal with them the different types of attacks they do how to avoid those attacks like jumping from say the ground pound those sorts of things this zompedia will tell you exactly how to deal with each type of enemy that you come across and the more that you kill the more information you unlock so it's well worth checking this especially when you see the little pop-up that says that you know you've unlocked new sections to see what you've unlocked is there's heaps of useful information about the enemy's resistances or different ways to deal with them that you can best use zombies that are burning or shocking are immune to that damage type as well so make sure you've got some basic like physical damage weapons to deal with those sort of enemies and also sweeping the legs to maim zombies especially the normal like runners and normal zombies you find is actually huge to like trip them over so they're not just like all running at you all at once especially if you're on stairs you can like manipulate the field in that way i found maiming the zombies rather than just like focusing on the head is actually more important because often when you focus on the head like you'll get criticals but when there's heaps around you it's better to control the ones that are around you rather than just trying to like kill them all curveballs are amazing and they're unlimited and they're on a short cooldown you should be using these as much as you can like regardless of what it is they're all honestly fantastic but the chem bomb is huge to like get rid of acid or fire that sort of stuff or secure the shurikens i really like and even the pipe bomb is pretty good as well but there's plenty of these that you'll find throughout the main story that you can use there is heaps of status effects like there's basic ones that you know obviously burning electricity and stuff but there is heaps of them some of them cannot be applied to you as well as the zombies and some of them can only be applied to zombies so it's worth familiarizing yourself with these different status effects as they're often mentioned in skill cards but not actually what they do in some regard but you can definitely familiarize yourself with these and i'll be popping them up on your screen right now and the last tip that i have for you is to go and check out my slayer guide if you're wondering which of the six slayers that you should pick goes through all six of them and their strengths and weaknesses so go and check that out thank you guys for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day